How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Daddy Dave, and this is the finale, episode 25 of a Let's Play series for Farming Simulator 22 on the mob map New Lands, where we last left off. We had went big and or went home. We built a cow barn, sheep pasture, chicken barn, and they are huge, and they've been churning away, producing all the stuff that we need. And, well, not stuff we need, but stuff we wanted to get. So it's one of those that very happy we got it. But the whole reason we came here was to help out family. We came here because my cousin broke his leg. He ended up falling off a horse and shattered his leg in a few places. And now he's finally on the mend. He's finally ready to get back to work to take back over his farm and I am gonna hop in my truck here I'm gonna go ahead and go pick him up So once we pick up our cousin here, we are going to just show him around, kind of introduce him to everything that we've done around the farm. He really hasn't been able to leave his house much. Um, you know, in the past, you know, almost year, uh, with the limited exception of, you know, exercises and stuff like that, which he's just kind of walked around you know, the l very immediate area here, he really hasn't been able to get out and about, but now he's finally ready to, you know, leave the house, get back to work, and take over his farm. So, let's go inside, we'll say hi to everybody, and, you know, we'll come back out, and we'll bring him along with us so we can uh, show him around. Alright, well, we'll kind of hop in the truck here. And now, I'm show him around town. And I think he's going to be pleasantly surprised. I'm going to show him all the facilities we bought, all the various uh, like greenhouses and uh, biogas, everything. I'm going to take him around everywhere just to kind of give him a quick overview of everything that's been done, all the things he's going to have to be responsible for now. You know, it's uh we we grew this place quite a bit from when we first started. So it's going to be really exciting to just kind of go through and just show him everything. And you can already see all the stuff that we've done so far right over the horizon there. So first place we're going to take him is to the farm immediately to the farm because that's where he's going to notice like the most drastic of change so as I mentioned we just put these things in we are in August so we did uh, skip ahead a little bit and check this out went ahead a whole month from when we uh, put all this stuff in and our sheep, they've been producing three and a half full pallets in just one month. That's, that is awesome. Our cows, 3,400 liters of milk, 6,000 liters of slurry. All that slurry can immediately be put into the biogas plant. The manure they've been producing. 4,860 liters can also be put into biogas. But where it's most impressive is through this set of doors. Stand off to the side here. Look at this. 
That's a lot of eggs. Each pallet, 1,400 eggs, each one. You've got 12 pallets there, so you've got over 12,000 liters. Well, probably, well, well over that. I mean, quite, you got quite a bit. You got quite a bit. Our composter that we built in the last episode as well, that has 16,836 liters that's processed through it. Oh, we need to take that to the rest of the farm and show off all the, or show him all the equipment. But he's got his own little telehandler now. This field directly in front of us is now his. So, and these multiple production points right here or theirs as well we've got this sawmill which this sawmill oh man this thing is a workhorse lots and lots of stuff can be processed through there we've got this carpentry right here that's ours this thing still has 23,000 liters of wood 231,000 liters of wood chips leaving us with 94,000 liters of planks and 97,000 liters of furniture. So we've got tons of product that can be run back and, you know, collected on. You know, he, he's going to be all set. Him and his family are more than set. We've got this potato production right here with over 18,000 liters of potatoes. And how much are these? These are 1,000 each? Yeah, 1,000 each. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 8,000 here. So you've got 26,000 liters of uh, potatoes. A uh, uh, french fries, right there. And then over here, we have the various uh, open air gardens. You know, this one's producing, I believe this one's potatoes. Uh, I did turn these off just to save on uh, the fees and stuff. Uh, this one, I believe, was. Uh, well, I've got one for all the newest uh, inventory for the open air gardens. So if we go here, potatoes, sunflowers, sugar beets, soybeans, corn, and cotton. And speaking of cotton, all the way down here is our cotton. And check it out. Got all this cotton that's produced, plus... 10,000 liters just sitting in there. So, it's, uh, yeah, the, these are worth their weight in gold, in my opinion. These productions, these open air gardens, are amazing. And they were very much, uh, helpful when we were working on, uh, this map and really only kind of starting with grass and. The grass is kind of our only real option at the beginning. You know, we could have done something else, but it would have been a lot harder. It would have taken much longer. Now we're going to take him to the spot where he should most remember, because this was his originally. Already he can see that there's the new silo. Beds, right over here. That's it. Everything else in this immediate area: the sugar beet processor, the silo, the uh, what is this? The commodities? What is this? Farm supply production. And look at this. You know that reminds me. Let's start off with the silo over here. The silo currently has. Here we go. 233,000 liters of water, not a big deal. 10,000 liters of wheat, 9,900 liters of manure, 9,600 liters of seeds, 2,000 liters of solid fertilizer, and almost 1,000 of lime. Over here, it can register the silo behind us, but it's got 233,000 liters of water, 
190 liters of sugar beet cut, 51 of slurry, and 8 of stone. All those are being distributed to other places, so it doesn't surprise me that's low. But over here, we've got quite a bit. Over here, we've got 16,000 liters of digestate, 365,000 liters of hay, 16,000 liters of total mixed ration, 2,000 liters of mineral feed, 466,000 liters of silage, and 43,000 liters of hay. I'm sorry, of seeds. It's, yeah, this thing also amazing. I think it was only like 25,000 to put it in. So again, worth its weight in gold, all the various stuff that you can produce with it. Again, we've got all this equipment here. We've got two new tractors for them. We, did, we start out with a little itty bitty fence uh, and we upgraded to the biggest fence, the uh, 1000 Barrio, I think. Uh, is it 1000 Barrio? Oh, 1050. So yeah. This uh, John Deere tractor, the, the we use this to throw straw into the pens, but I think you can use it just to break up bales. We've got the uh, TLX 9000 in the back over there. Uh, we've got a couple bale trailers, a log trailer, um, the uh, liquids tanker. We've got the Crone, uh, what is that, the Big M, the mower in the back. Uh, we've got a wood harvester. We've got this cool little uh, RTR 100, which is a you know foldable wind rower. We've got our chrome baler. Um, on the front of the fence, we also have that uh, wood harvester, that uh, wood chipper. So, I mean, all these tools, like there's there's nothing original over here besides those two sheds. Oh, you know what? That was something else that just reminded me. We're going to run back to the farm just real quick. So we showed them the field over where the open-air gardens were, but we also expanded the fields right here by the immediate farm. And we own all this property out here. Like, all this is owned, we just didn't get a chance to expand and make more field. But we did do a lot of harvesting of the trees around here, so that's why it looks a lot more open. But you can see all this field, like the only field that was originally here was directly in front right here. Like all this was the original field, that is it. Over there didn't exist, over here didn't exist, like all this stuff is, you know, relatively, you know, n well not even relatively, it's new to them. So, yeah. They're going to have a lot more stuff to do, a lot more property to maintain. They said they're up for it. They're up for the challenge, so I know they'll do just fine without me here. They would have done all this stuff had I not been here for them, but had they, had they not been hurt, they would have gotten it all done. And now we're going to take them over to see the garden center, as I call it.
that? It's right here, the garden center. So we own all these greenhouses here. They're producing various things. The base game stuff like strawberries, uh, tomatoes, and uh, lettuce, which are being produced and populated over here. But these are also producing flowers and red cabbage. We own this uh, mulcher here, which makes various products into taro. This is full, just chock full. We own this plant center right here, which is producing things like bonsais and cypress and uh, one other product I do not remember. Some leftover seeds for them. We do not own these little garden uh, greenhouses back here. But, uh... Yeah, we almost uh, almost got this whole area to be ours. And then from here, we also bought and retrofitted the oil plant just down the street. And that should actually have some uh, product right out in front for us. So they're going to have to go through and, you know, sell a lot of the product that's left over for them. And, oh yeah, look at that. So we bought this plant and spit out corn oil as well as soybean oil. So you can see that sunflower right here is corn oil. Down here in the green, that's soybean oil. So it's... It's just chugging away and doing its job. So yeah, now he's going to be responsible for taking care of all this, uh, the oil plant and all this stuff over here. And now we're going to head over towards town there. Now up here is the farmer's market. I've informed him of the, you know, hours of operation for vendors and people supplying the vendors with goods. You know, between 6 to 9, the gates over here do open up. Uh, the bollards, you can see they're actually open right now because it's only 6.30 in the morning. And he's also aware I took a job up here. I've already put in my, you know, resignation, my two weeks. They were very disappointed. You know, did a lot for them, got a lot of jobs done. Um, went ahead and installed this uh, sales point right here, as well as all the, I didn't install them, but they have tons of sales points inside the shed there. Uh, we installed this uh, point here to be able to handle and allow them to distribute methane 
from the biogas plant. Uh, ooh, you know what? Let's backtrack. So yeah, we brought up all of our methane here and distributed it through the yard. Then back here is the recycling center. You know, we cleaned up tons and tons of garbage that uh, was just carelessly left around. We recycled everything that we could. We also purchased this kind of similar to the mulcher on uh, by the greenhouses and the garden center uh, but this one's just kind of built up on steroids this one really produces as you can see tons and tons of taro that uh, he's gonna have to deal with once uh, you know once he's uh, back to the swing of things And now, I'm going to take him to the last part that's going to affect him directly, and that is the biogas plant. Firstly, we've got the acetic acid plant we had installed, the silage dryer, nope, not silage, digestate dryer, that's the word I'm looking for, and then the biogas plant itself. This is his trailer. Just everything the eye sees is his. Right here. This was the kind of the heart of the operation. This really allowed us to you know crank out a bunch of material and really that that dryer right there for the digestate was the king of the show. Really made us a good amount of money. But that, that is it. I mean, he's got uh, quite an empire that he can build off of. And I'm going to be excited that one day that I come back and see all the progress that he makes around here. It's going to be uh, something to behold. And I'm just really, really glad I was able to you know, help out. Oh, wait. No. I'm sorry. I was glad that I could help out, but there is some more for him to look at. I was really glad to be able to help him out, be able to, you know, come out from where I was in Spain to make it down here to Germany and really uh, get them up and running, get them on their feet, keep them on their feet. So, this, uh,. Quite an experience. I'll be able to take a lot of the stuff I did here 
along with me, the knowledge I've gained along the way, and uh, yeah, be able to apply it to my next adventure. I'm kicking around the idea of going home, heading back to the States, and uh, you know, kind of starting things up from there. It's t I think it's time to you know, head home, see my immediate family. I think uh, my wife will appreciate being able to go home and see her family. Being overseas, I think it's it's time. I think uh, you know, red, white, and blue is calling me. Just need to figure out where we're gonna land in the states. I haven't really decided where yet. Over here, we own both of the facilities over here. We own this sawmill here. We also own this carpentry over here. So all the product that is being produced over at the sawmill is being shipped out to random places. Oh, and there's still some stuff over here. So, yeah, there's, uh, there's going to be a quite a lot of running around to do. Uh, you know, that just reminded me. I don't think we took a look at what kind of uh, product we had over at the uh, digestate dryer. Let's see. We can actually look at it right over here. Should be quite a bit over there for them to, like, th that's going to keep them f going for quite some time. 72,000 liters of solid fertilizer they can up and sell right away. That that right there is going to be, you know, quite a good chunk of, chunk of money. Not to mention the uh, furniture and pellets right there. That's going to be a good chunk of money. Like, they're going to be able to do a ton of stuff with that. They'll be able to expand their business from there and really really do things right but now I'm going to take him back to his house and then I am gonna mosey on out of town and here's where we come up on the other side of the property as you can see look it out look out there you know we worked hard over this past what year and a half almost or yeah we've been about a year about a year we've been here and we built a lot built a ton of stuff so I'm just like I keep saying I'm happy that uh, we were able to do this we were able to you know look out for family and get things done I'll go ahead and drop him off here at the farm. You know, he's telling me that uh, what he would like to do is get out of the house over there. I guess they're renting that house. I didn't realize that before. Um, but he wants to buy the land on the hill right over in that direction. He wants to build a house right there just kind of nestled in between all the the stonework over there, the little hillside. He wants to build it up there so every day he can look down on his on his plot of land here and be able to just keep an eye on it. Which is great. I mean that's that's an amazing amazing thing. I hope one day I'll be able to come back and see that. Let's go ahead and shut that. 
But now it's time for me to get out of town. Uh, it's always like you want to be able to keep doing more and building and building and there's still plenty of stuff that we can do but you know this is always going to be temporary here we're always going to turn the farm back over to our cousin as soon as they got on the mend and we're better well that time's finally came you know took about a year for them to fully recover and you know get back to where they could really start doing all the stuff they need to be able to do to you know operate a farm especially one of this caliber we you know we took them from you know starting out to you know tycoon well, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hop on the highway and we're gonna start driving west got our passports and then we're going to hop a plane and go back home to America. So I think uh I think at this point Europe has really done everything that we needed it to. But I hope you enjoyed this episode and the series. If you did, please show me by liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, following, doing all the things the algorithms enjoy you doing that shows you're engaged with this channel and enjoying the content. And that being said, I hope you have a fantastic day, and I hope you're looking forward to the next series. Take care.